Could we possibly get two more beverages? Sure. And also two Jaeger bombs and your phone number. Thank you, babes. Hi, I'm Tia Coffee, and you might know me from Series 2 of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Reveal! It's not a reveal, Sars. You and I met on a lovely October afternoon where he came to our student theatre at Nottingham. And I was like, these skinny jeans aren't leaving much to the imagination. I met Tia before she was Tia in those inglorious days. We make each other laugh. Graduation from friendship to relationship was very, very smooth. Hugh definitely said that he was straight publicly, but behind closed doors, he definitely wasn't. Things ended because I left Nottingham and moved down to London. Hi. Hi. Have they sorted you out for drinks? Can I get you anything? A, a tea or a coffee? Just sit down. I can't stand here. <laughs> it's nice of you to come out natural today. It's brave. Yeah, I just didn't want to put anything on. There you go. Did you always fancy me? Um, yeah, I think so. Really? Yeah. Even though I look like this? Yeah. Oh. When I first met you, I thought you were quite strange. I right, very willing to just have, like, a very silly time. And I was like, this feels like my energy. I didn't know that I was fanciable. So that's nice to hear. He was a massive flirt with everyone. So I kind of assumed that he thought that everyone fancied him. He's got an ego. Cosmo, hi, darling Cosmo. <laughs> Um, could we possibly get two more beverages? Sure. And also two Jaeger bombs and your phone number. Thank you, Cosmo. Thank you, babes. Why were we the worst kept secret on campus? Was it a secret? Was it badly kept? Well, I felt like it was not discussed because you weren't entirely comfortable that with your too. sexuality. When I was at college, I was like, bye. I was like, yes. And then everyone was like, weird around me. And so I was like, at university, it was an opportunity to be like, cool and straight. That's really weird that your like rebellious phase was like heterosexuality. Yeah. I feel like it's usually like not that. I'm such a different person now to what I was then. So while I can understand my behavior intellectually, I don't have that same emotional connection to what I was feeling back then. I think a lot of what I wanted to do at the time was not necessarily control people, but control their expectations of me. Yeah. And there was an, like, a level of manipulation there that I think is incredibly unhelpful. Whenever I felt I could manipulate you into feeling so insecure that I could make you do things that I wanted, like drive me to McDonald's, there's part of my sociopathy that, like, I manipulate you into doing things. I literally hate how much that makes perfect sense. <laughs> he kind of, like, put me down to make me keener. It kind of worked, which is really alarming, because I've never recognised that in myself until this moment. I think I was joking, but it's one of those jokes that comes from an uncomfortable place of truth. It really does. It's sucky behaviour, and I'm glad that I'm not like that anymore. And I'm glad that you know I'm not like that anymore. No, you're not. Um, but it's easy to apologize for it by being like, oh, it was a response to like toxic masculinity and the, the way the world is. No, you were just a dick. Yeah, both. Yeah. I like to think it was both. Did my behavior make you hate me? Uh, no. Oh, good. Did it make you hate yourself? Yeah. That's what I was worried about. Yeah. Um, so I think looking back, it's very easy to see why that would be the case. And I don't think it's very nice. Uh, it didn't feel great. It wasn't Hugh that I hated in this situation, but it kind of made me have issues with myself, which is a little bit heavy. Just letting people treat me like garbage. Well, that's their doing. They're, they're choosing to do that. You're not choosing to let them. I think it's, it's, I think a... it's definitely a choice to let them. And it's not a nice feeling to know that I've, like, allowed that to happen. It's a horrible feeling, because it is my behaviour. That is, like, part of this cycle. So it's, it's sad to hear that kind of 
like they, these these feelings are still there. Yeah. I feel like things are getting really emotional for me, and I didn't realize it was going to be this intense. Two Cosmos, please, Cosmo. Mm hmm. I was expecting that joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not as fresh as you think. Everyone does it. It's fine. I still like you. He still likes you. It's not getting a tip. What have we learned from this dinner? My biggest takeaway is that I probably need to spend more conscious effort to like address feelings that you have rather than just take them for granted. I've learned um, that I probably have the capacity to be a lot stronger than I actually am and like maybe not let people coerce me with like certain behaviors. Me and Hugh are gonna be chatting about our emotions all the time and the first thing I'm gonna to chat to him about is that he didn't offer to split the bill. That was so rude. Should we go and get another beverage somewhere? Maybe, let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Can I have a piggyback? These yes. bills are really hard, thank you.